I will come back, historically low inventory levels for existing houses and lower rates push new home sales higher in March. However, though, home builders are still sitting on a very high amount of houses they have still yet to sell. This is based on a brand new report from the US Census Bureau. And in today's video, I'm gonna share all the details. I will also provide an explanation about why new home sales reach a one year high when rates are still above 6%. <laughs> Go figure, and I'll share all the details with you guys. And also, of course, before we get started, if you guys appreciate all the research that goes into making these videos, then please consider subscribing. And of course, please hit the like button as well. And of course, if you guys want a real estate agent referral in virtually any parts of the United States, then check out that link below, which is homeandmoney.com slash Jason to get started today. And with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So here's that report that was just announced today, which is um, April 25th here. So this is based on a new single family houses that sold and also are for sale uh, for March, just posted on April 25th, uh, which is today at the time of this video here. Uh, which, by the way, a friendly reminder, I have to mention this every single month because this is very, very important. When talking about a brand new home sale, that's really acting like a pending home sale. This is based on a deposit taken or a sales agreement signed between a home builder and home buyer. In other words, this is not a closed home sale. Therefore, this is a leading indicator of our U.S. housing market. So here's a look at new home sales. Again, more like a contract being signed between a buyer and seller or buyer and builder, I should say, and also um, houses for sale. So let's first talk about um, houses actually sold uh, for March. Uh, and these, by the way, are uh, seasonally adjusted and also analyzed as well, uh, and also in thousands of units. So for in March, there was 683,000 brand new single family home sales on an analyzed basis here. That's an increase of 9.6% compared to uh, February this year, but still down by 3.4% from March of 2022. Now here's uh, the details regarding this because at 683,000, this is a one year high uh, for the pace of home sales in the United States. That's number one. This also beat expectations as well. Here is what their forecast was. Their forecast was 630,000 uh, but the actual number came in about 53,000 more than that at 683,000. Here's a look at our good Uncle Fred's uh, website as well regarding um, home sales. Uh, so 683,000, uh, this has been increasing or has been on a upward trend, I should say, ever since October this year. Uh, but at 683,000, this is actually the highest levels we've had going back to March last year. Now, here's a look at new home sales over the past five years, zooming out over the past five years. So new home sales have been falling or have been on a downward trend since November 2020. Uh, they reached a, a bottom, at least a bottom so far, uh, back in mid-2022 when the analyzed home sale pace was at 543,000. But home sales have been increasing ever since October last year. So taking a step back here, I was just trying to figure out why did new home sales increase by nearly 10% compared to February, but we're still down compared to one year ago. Uh, this may be a, an explanation right here. So look at this right here. So rates starting in uh, March were at 7.10%. Uh, uh, this is according to the Morse News Daily for people with great credit, of course. These are average rates for 30 year fix. 7.1% to start the month for March. And by the time we hit the end of March, rates decreased to 6.57%. Therefore, because rates decreased from 7.1% uh, down to 6.6%, that may have enticed some home buyers to buy a brand new house. And again, keep in mind, these new home sale numbers for March are based on signed contracts for March as well. So look at this as well, because this could be another explanation about why new home sales increase this March. So according to Rick uh, Palacios Jr., who's a director of research at John Burns Research and Consulting Firm, he says here that um, rates uh, are not 6.75%. They're 4.99% to 5.5%, if, 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 big if here, if you buy a home from a home builder. It's an offer many home buyers cannot refuse. 
So here are some um, advertisements uh, they um, provided here. So Pulte Homes is offering a 30 year fixed rate at 4.99% if you buy a house uh, from uh, April 10th uh, and close by June 30th, 2023. Toll Brothers is offering at 4.99% for a 30 year fix uh, for quick move in ready houses uh, eligible for a close date by June 26. We also see this for Taylor Morrison in Atlanta, 30 year fix at 5.49%. Of course, if you have, buy a house by the state right here. And of course, Richmond houses as well, if you close by a 630 as well, they're offering a 5.37% rate for a conventional 30 year fix. This is pretty wild here because these rates right here are approximately one percentage point lower compared to current market rates uh, today for people looking to buy an existing house. So that coupled with the fact that we have a lack of um, houses for sale for existing houses down by about 51% compared to pre-pandemic levels, this could be uh, one reason why uh, new home sales actually increase in March in the United States. All right, let's get back to the Census Bureau's report right here. So they actually provide uh, new home sales by each of the four major regions as well. And there's some very, very big differences here. Look at the Northeast. On a month to month basis, new home sales increase a whopping 170.8%. Whereas the Midwest only saw a gain of 6%. The South decreased by 5.4%, but the West increased by nearly 30%. Some very, very big differences on a month over month basis. However, though, uh, most of these regions here have recorded decreases on a year over year basis. Uh, the biggest decrease was actually in the Midwest, falling by 11.3%, whereas in the uh, Northeast, they saw a giant increase of 27.5%. In regards to the number of houses for sale, there's 432,000, uh, and this is not annualized. These are uh, seasonally adjusted, but not annualized. So 432,000 uh, this March, which is still very, very high, despite the 0.5% decrease from uh, last month, and also the 5.1% uh, from 12 months ago. So here is uh, Uncle Fred here, 432,000 this March, down from the peak that we saw back in uh, October 2022, when there's 466,000 uh, brand new houses for sale. But when we zoom out right here at uh, 432,000, this is much higher compared to pre-pandemic levels. So for example, back in February 2020, there was only 328,000 um, for sale. Now there's 432,000. Additionally, when I zoom out going back to 2007, here's why it gets really interesting here because at 432,000, when looking at pre-pandemic levels, this is the highest levels going back to June of 2008. Here's also a look at the month supply right now because uh, for March, it's 7.6 months. The housing supply for brand new houses is at 7.6 months. When looking at pre-pandemic levels, this is the highest levels going back to February of 2011. Something worth uh, mentioning as well is that 7.6 months uh, for this March is still much lower than the all-time record highs we saw back in January of 2009 when the month supply was 12.2 months. And also uh, the uh, 7.6 months uh, in contrast here, is much higher than the all-time record lows at 3.3 months that was set back in August of 2020. So to summarize this, at 7.6 months, uh, this is much uh, lower than the 12.2 months, which is the all-time record high, uh, but of course, much higher than the all-time record low at 3.3 months that was set back in August of 2020. Additionally, it's more normal to have a range of four to six months. So at 7.6 months, this is still very high. The Census Bureau also broke down the number of houses that sold by stage of construction. So again, there's 683,000 this March, but the vast majority came from houses under construction at 269,000 and houses completed as well. So 269,000 is still much lower compared to March of 2022, when there's approximately 373,000. In stark contrast though, look at completed houses though. Completed houses, 246,000 
versus the only 176,000 one year ago. So in other words, a big decrease of home sales for houses under construction, yet a giant increase of houses that are completed that sold. In regards to the number of houses for sale, uh, again, there's 432,000 this March. The vast majority of those houses for sale are houses under construction. 267,000 versus the only 71,000 completed houses. There's a couple things I do want to mention though, because uh, the number of houses uh, for sale, but are under construction is still very, very high, even though they're down compared to the peak we saw last year. For completed houses that are for sale, there's 71,000 this March. This is uh, twice as many from last March when there's 32,000, which by the way, 32,000 was the all time record low for the number of houses completed that are for sale. Having said that, 71,000 is still fairly low when looking at historical levels. The reason why I wanna to touch on these numbers right here, uh, the number of houses under construction and completed that are still for sale, uh, the numbers right here are obviously still very, very high. This is obviously one reason why builders are offering incentives for home buyers right now. All right, I know that was a lot to cover in today's video, so here's a summary for you guys. Uh, new home sales were well above expectations this March. It's probably the result of low inventory of existing houses, historically speaking, of course, and builders offering incentives such as interest rate buy downs. And by the way, those interest rate buy downs are not typically offered for home buyers looking to buy an existing house. Also, new home sales have been an upward trend since October last year. Did we already hit a bottom in mid 2022? Time will tell, and I'll definitely keep you posted. And with that said, thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you on the next video.